All right, now um, getting everything ready to put a coat of paint on, but before we can do the paint, I am going to have to seal up all the little screw holes, seams, um, any little uh, imperfections. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to mix up some thickened epoxy and just put that into all the little joints, basically using it as like, um, uh, like a body fill. That's the idea. So yeah, so we're gonna mix up some uh, thickened epoxy and we'll, uh, we'll go into each one of the seams and we'll just kind of smear it out nice and smooth. And once that's done, we're gonna let that cure up and then uh, sand everything down to get ready for a barrier coat. Been uh, trying to figure out what works best here, trial and error. But I find that actually, you win these little um, 80 grit flap wheels there and a rotary tool actually works pretty good to get in here. This, uh, the epoxy is really hard and the wood is obviously very soft, so you don't. Uh, well, what I was using is trying to get clean up most of it with the belt sander. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it would go a little too far around and start cutting into the. Uh, to the layers but I found that this was just almost the right size just to get in there clean this up and then come behind it with the uh, with a palm sander to clean it up and smooth it out was sanding here and found another void so I just had to cut that out fine basically so we got some better fitting plywood but that's gonna be another spot I just have to fill with epoxy originally I was gonna leave it but ultimately water is gonna find a way in there and it's gonna cause a spot to rot out so um, yeah this is what it is so that's gonna be another spot to fill for a couple of those and uh, one up here in the door a couple of spots in the front, same thing, so, oh, well, it is what it is.
All right, got all the joints sanded. So that's the uh, uh, screw holes or any hole, seams, everything, been epoxied, sanded, nice and smooth. Um, that, I mean, I'm not, uh, not to do any sort of product promotions here, but that Milwaukee little rotary tool was fantastic. There's uh, quite a few times that I gave it quite a hot supper there and it uh, took it like a champ. So I'm quite impressed with that. I thought I was gonna burn it out at least twice, but nope. Anywho, uh, so next step is now to sand the whole thing. So I'm just going to hit it with uh, with a 320 grit sandpaper just to loosen off any uh, debris and obviously smooth it out, get rid of any of the uh, the rough stuff. So uh, that's what's up next. I'm going to use uh, just, I'm just going to use a little palm sander and I'm going to put a vacuum attached to it because there's so much dust in here. So I'm going to uh, rig up some sort of vacuum attachment. And uh, yeah, get this ready for epoxy barrier coat. All right, we're uh, finished sanding. Fortunately, the battery died there, so you didn't see the whole thing. But anyways, it's all sanded now. Um, I at one point started fighting with the the vacuum, so I abandoned the whole dust collection system and just let the dust fly wherever. So now I'm going to wipe everything down with uh, just going to use a microfiber cloth. Original is going to do like a wet cloth and wipe everything down but with my luck and plywood with this project it's probably the whole thing is going to delaminate and fall apart so I'm just going to go dry microfiber and as the rag gets dirty just you know get, grab a new one so hopefully that's going to be okay so that the uh, the epoxy would adhere but we'll see all right uh, so ended up yesterday going over this with uh with actual damp microfiber cloth to get more dust off so it's uh it's fairly clean now um taped up some of the edges where i don't want to necessarily get epoxy or paint i started taping up the little brackets but realized that that's the tape's not sticking whatever i'm just going to go very carefully with the brush even uh even if i get a little bit of paint on the bracket it's not the end of the world but um right now we're going to be doing the barrier coat of epoxy. So it's going to be unthickened epoxy. So just mix the epoxy, put it in a paint tray, and then just roll it on like paint. So uh, see how much I have. I'm hoping to get two coats, but I may only get one on it. We'll see. But um, yeah, so the epoxy is going to go on to give a nice barrier coat to prevent all the moisture to going into the wood, as well as seal up the wood fibers for the paint. Um, and then once that's on, it's going to cure it for three days. And then we can go ahead and put uh, put the paint on. But anyways, I'm going to get suited up, put on a pair of uh, coveralls, respirator on, you know, the usual, and slap a coat of epoxy on this. So now we got the epoxy on the trailer has been cured for a few days. Uh, so now it's going to be painting. I got um, I sanded the, the the whole trailer with uh, with a little SOS scrubby pad just to get rid of um, uh, I can't recall the name of that uh, the byproduct that comes off of epoxy. It's like a waxy substance, but during the curing process. But anyways, used a little scr uh, scrub pad just to get rid of that cleaned it all down with uh, fiber, microfiber cloths and some water. So now ready to paint. This is what we're gonna be using here to paint. It's a two-part polyurethane paint made by Endura. Uh, yeah, so with this stuff here, with uh, because we're gonna be rolling it on, we're gonna mix it uh, two to one. So we're gonna mix this up and start painting. The downside with this stuff is that it has to be fairly warm to to uh, to cure 
and uh, finally got some warm weather again. It's been a little chilly for a bit. Now we're back to being warm, but now it's about uh, 31, 32 degrees Celsius outside. In the garage, it's probably about the same. So I have to keep the door closed so that the wind's not blown around. So uh, yay, it's gonna be fun wearing a respirator and sweating like crazy in here. But anyways, let's get the paint mixed up and let's get it applied to the trailer and so we can get out of here and enjoying some cold frothy beverages. So that's the first coat done. Uh, went on fairly well. There's some runs that we're gonna have to maybe clean up once it dries up a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, this paint is definitely a little bit more difficult to use than say, you know, regular paint. I don't know why. It's just the mixing, because it's a two-part paint. Um, the VOCs off this thing, it, it, this stuff smells. It's almost has a, um, like smells like nail polish what it smells like but really strong you definitely want respirator and uh, uh, good ventilation while using this stuff a um, couple things to note with my experience the uh, manufacturer recommends that it gets reduced by 10% by volume when you're brushing it on I actually found that I preferred using it as thick as possible uh, just because I liked a little bit more texture on it just to kind of hide some of the blemishes some of the imperfections from uh from sanding and from you know well just just life it's uh you know but what it is what it is um yeah so another thing too with this stuff is that it uh i think you have a maximum of 18 hours after painting to put a second coat on without having to sand so once this one's dried up I'm going to just second coat and maybe a third coat if it needs it, but um, that might actually be late tonight, like midnight. So we'll see if I record that, but I mean, who really wants to watch a video on painting? So um, anyways, yeah, let this dry up and we'll see where we're at. All right, well, um, so done painting. Got uh, three coats on this. The first two coats were done with a 1 8 inch foam roller and the third coat was done with a 10 millimeter nap roller. Uh, I really wish that I'd actually started with and only used the nap roller instead of the 1 8 foam roller. It seemed to be, it put down more paint, got into the, the grooves a little bit better. There was also some imperfections. Uh, there still is, uh, you can see it in the, in the finish it's not 100 percent perfect but um the nap roller would have gotten into those little spots a little bit better but uh all in all really happy with it as i said you can still the, the finish isn't perfect there's some runs um some stuff that's inside the uh like basically some of the the, the epoxy that didn't get finished smooth or one of the joints so whatever i'm not overly concerned about it uh it's it makes it look homemade. It doesn't make it look like it was made perfectly in a factory. Um, the paint, uh, as I said before, it was a, it's a two-part polyurethane paint. Um, it's give you. A, this is some I pulled this some out of the cup from the one of the paint cups, the mixing cups. 
It's, uh, it's almost got like a, like a vinyl kind of a, uh, like a vinyl, well, it was not in the frame when I ripped that. Um, I'll get a little piece here, start sticking to me. But yeah, see, it's like a, it feels like a thin vinyl is the, the, the way that it feels. Um, uh, notes for painting, you definitely need a respirator for this stuff. There was a few times that the, uh, I don't know, like bumped the respirator, it kind of came loose a little bit on my face and I got a snoot full of the, uh, the paint. It, uh, it's strong. It smells like nail polish, but, uh, you get a little bit of that in your sinuses there and you'd be smelling it for, for a few hours. It's rough. Uh, we actually also learned that the garage to the house is not completely airtight. And cause I had the garage closed up while this was curing so that I could, you know, I wasn't getting bugs and everything stuck to the paint. Uh, we woke up in the morning the next day with, uh, with some headaches and the house just smelling terrible with this stuff. So we ended up having to, on the hottest day, turn off the AC and open up all the windows to ventilate the house. So be careful if you are using this kind of paint, uh, kind of be careful with that. Um, but as for finish, this stuff is hard. I, I'm actually quite impressed. It's almost like, a, uh, it's got like a bit of an enamel kind of uh, consistency to it. I mean, when they, on the can it says it's like 2H hardness for the pencil test, but I'm impressed. I'm like this. So anyways, um, yeah, so now I'm just going to remove the, the tape and all the, you know, anything that's been masked off and clean up where I've spilt paint on, or not spilt, but I uh, got paint on some of the brackets and some on the frame and, you know, I clean up those. So that's going to be my next task. So anyways, I'm going to, I'll do that. Um, but in the next video we're we'll be doing the, we're putting on some solar panels, doing up the external electrical and basically everything that needs to happen on the outside so that I can get the wires, I, I can do all the wiring work on the inside so that we can, we can move on. But um, anyway, so that's for the next video. So I'm gonna cut it off right here because I'm starting to ramble. So yeah, so I'll go ahead and clean this up and in the next video you'll see, you'll see that's what we're gonna be doing is doing the outside electrical. But um, thanks, uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, down in the comments. Um, be happy to answer anything. I mean, I'm no expert, but uh, I'll tell you what I've uh, what I've I've experienced, anyways. Anyways, thanks for watching.